This is part two of module three that we're looking at now. And in part one, we just set up all the settings for this final exam that we're going to give. And we now want to put some questions in there. And we've looked at finding questions in a bunch of different ways, and we did a little bit of modifying them. Um, we're now going to do some more modifying with this part. And I'm going to get a question to modify by using the search field, which we fool around with a little bit. But say I want to get a question that has to have the student find the slope of a line and then interpret it in a sentence. Okay, so I know I want some kind of application or scenario. And uh, I'm going to then search for slope, because I want to do the slope. And the word story is sometimes used for applications. I want to search in all the libraries and let's see what we come up with. All right, there's a bunch of problems. And uh, for this activity, let's use 68130. Let's use this one, from phone card, balance story, find slope. So let's check that one. I don't actually need to check it. Um, we're going to take this problem, and we're going to edit it. So you could add and then edit, but you can also just hit template. We're going to use this as a template and make some changes. So we now have access to this problem. And I mentioned before how you know you template this, you create a private copy that only you have access to. OK, so as it is now, this problem gives you a situation about a phone card. And it gives you a nice little linear equation of two variables. And it asks you for the number that goes along with the slope. Well, that's great, but I also want the students to interpret this slope in this situation. And I want them to write it out in a complete sentence. Well, this question doesn't have that, but we can add that in. So the type now is a number, and that's because the answer to this question is just a number. But if you want to have a question that has more than one part, you need the question type to be multi-part. All right. Now, all this stuff here is good, but we're going to go ahead and edit it. Now, the common control is where you set up all the variables and the random numbers and the settings for how to get the answers, and so how you pick the answers. And the question text is what the student sees. Okay, so question text is what a student sees. This is where the problem is really programmed. And we're going to be making changes to both, but just so you know what's going on. Um, some problems are written with the four box entry, and so there's two additional boxes, one box for answer and one box for question control. Personally, I put everything in those two boxes in common control, and I find no need for the four box entry. So you'll notice that in my programming instructions. Okay. So common control, what do we want to do? Well, the first thing we need to do is say, hey, my open math, this is a multi-part problem, and these are the types for the two parts we're going to have. And you do that by hitting dollar sign, A and S, types, answer types. And you tell it, the answer types I want to use are, I want a number for the first part, and, because remember, the first part is just the slope number. And I want an essay for the second part, because I want them to write a sentence interpreting the slope. OK, so you can look in the appendix for, if you have different types of problems, what these code names are. But this is for a number answer, and that's for a written essay response. So now it knows there's two parts to the problem. The first is a number. The second is an essay. Now, all this stuff is great because it tells me how to get the number for the slope. But since there's two answers, this command of just answer doesn't work on its own. You need to now index it, right? Because you're going to have more than one answer. So the index starts at 0. And by putting bracket 0, I'm actually saying the first answer is this number. 
Now you don't really need to say what the second answer is because it's an essay. It's not going to be automatically graded. You're going to have to go in and read the sentences from the students and give them credit. So don't worry about that. One thing you might want to do though is to give them an editor when they're looking at it. I mean, let's look at it right now. Um, well, let's look at it in a minute. And because we need to fix what the student sees first. So the student, the beginning part's great. We need to say that the answer box is now the first answer box. And we need to say to interpret the slope of this equation in a complete sentence. And the uh, less than forward slash p greater than just gives you a page break. So answer box one is for the second answer. So this will put a little box for the number, and this will give a little box for the essay. Let's take a look at what we've done now. All right, so we now have added in this extra sentence and this box for them to put. And the answer is still going to match up with the one part that is automatically graded. Now suppose you wanted your students for, maybe not for this problem, but for another problem to have access to all the formatting tools that they might get when they're using the discussion boards. Well, you can add that in with the command display format. And we have to use the index one because we're doing this for the second part. And we're say editor. And watch what happens now. We now have no, we don't have it. Okay, I'm just realizing there was a slight mistake here. Uh, we don't want the bracket one, and it's not understanding that we want the editor. Let's remove that and just have the command display format. And now when we hit save and test, you'll see it does give us the editing toolbar around the essay portion. And I'm guessing that you don't need the index because it knows which parts are essays. Maybe if you have more than one essay, you need to specify. But for this one, we just want to have display format equals editor. So we now have converted that question into a multi-part question. And the second part is an essay. And we can go ahead and save this. After we save it, we'll get the option to add it to the assessment. And let's go ahead and do that because we want to add this question to the assessment. Now have that question added where they find the slope and interpret it. All right. Next will be part three where we're actually writing these questions from scratch, pretty much. There's going to be three questions I've chose to look at. So pick one or do all three. And that'll be our final task in setting up this final exam.